want to talk about Declan Rice because we've spoken about him a lot over the mm. last six months regarding eligibility. Will he, won't he play for Ireland? And probably actually haven't spoken that much about him as a player and what he's doing. And well, he's front and centre now after scoring his first Premier League goal yeah. against Arsenal last weekend. Gets the Man of the Match award. He's been linked with Manchester City, Manchester United. Suddenly it seems as though he's the future of English football of the Premier League, 50 million quid. Is he all that from what you've seen? I think so. Really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think it's a shame we didn't qualify him. Uh, did Martin have an opportunity to qualify him? He did, but in, in fairness to O'Neill, I think he said that... It, he played him in three games, three friendlies, yeah. but that he didn't want to hold him hostage, basically, and say, I'm putting you out if you're not ready. So, yeah. now, it may... <laughs> At the time, I think O'Neill felt he was doing the right no, thing, no, and it's hard to disagree that, with that. His but, principles, uh, I wouldn't necessarily agree with them, because the way the game is, it's, uh, you know, you take your chances as, as, as you go along. Uh, he was always going to be an outstanding player, uh, Nathan, and he's proven to be an even better player than, than he, he promised to be. Uh, What's he got? Well, he, first of all, he's, he's a very good footballer. He's a very, very strong physical lad, physical lad who's playing in the middle of the field mm. and playing very, very well. Uh, now, I think if you, if you were picking him in the best position, he'd definitely be centre-back. OK. But, but because he's so valuable, he's a bit like Brian Robson, right? I played with Brian Robson, who's young for West mm. Brom. Brian Robson could play anywhere, left-back. Centre-back, you know, he's playing off the centre-half, was without question his best position. He could read the game well, he was a good header of the ball, he was a good tackler. But he was too valuable as a midfield player yeah. to put him in that position. Because my memory of Brian Robson was that he, he was box to box, it was energy, he could, he could cover so much ground. He, well, he, well, he did that, but he yeah. could play. You know, he, he, he wasn't a Bobby Charlton, but he was a great tackler of the ball, he could win the ball well, he could read the game well, he was a good header of the ball. And he'd get you a few goals. You know, we played Ipswich one night, having had, taken a hiding from Ipswich in those days with Bobby Robson, 7-0 uh, at Ipswich on my birthday. Uh, and f five weeks, six weeks later, we played him at West Brom and beat him 4-0. Right. And Brian scored a hat-trick from midfield. Yeah. Right? So he was too... If I was picking the best position for Brian Robson, I'd pick him up playing off the centre-half. He could do it in his sleep. But he was too valuable a player to, as a midfield player to do it. Now, Rice is in the same... I put him in the same position as that. Yeah. To play at the back for Rice... Is it not a very different skill set playing it's as a, a central it, defender well, it, as a box-to-box -box yeah, midfielder? It's easier. It's easier. If you're playing the centre-half position, right, first of all, and you've got the attributes to win the ball in the air and tackle and read the game, it's a doddle for these guys, for Robson and, and, and Rice, if, if you wanted them to do it. But when you're playing in midfield and he can do his stuff in midfield and score a goal, it's like if you are going on the transfer, buying, buying two players, right, for 70, say 70 million yeah. nowadays, and you had one that was a, a specialised centre-half, and somebody like Rice who can do it in both positions, you'd go for the guy who can do it in both positions. Because if you put Rice back in the middle of the back four, it'd be easy for him now. He's got everything in front of him. You don't have to be creative. You win the ball, you're marking people. It's, it's not an easy, but don't get me wrong, it's not an, but it's a much easier position than playing in the middle of the field. And a good centre-half would be, on the, on, the, on the transfer market, would be worth X amount. A good midfield player of equal ability yeah would be much more expensive. And, this, and you go that then to centre forward, goal scorers are more expensive, because it's a more difficult game. The further you go up the pitch in football, the more difficult it is to play. So he can play, he's playing and playing exceptionally well in the middle of the field. But I wouldn't be surprised at some stage, well, England are not well off if he does go with England. Uh, for us, he'd definitely be playing in the middle of the field. Well, Mick McCarthy said that he wants to no his team No question about him. it. Now, if he plays for England, don't be surprised if he plays in the back four. Yeah. Because if they have midfield, but they don't have anybody as good as him in the midfield. Anyway, that's how valuable he is. He's a big, strong lad. He's mobile. He's a good football brain. Passes the ball well. Gets to the odd goal. And the, I keep hearing me mention as a defensive midfield player. He's very good defensively, but he can get forward as well. Like I, I, as you know, I don't agree with the, the term. designated mm. uh, holding midfield player because most of them are expect this lad does that and plays. Well, he said Pellegrini had been at him about getting forward more and yeah, scoring more goals. Scoring more goals. What's wrong with it? Because you I guess probably even for younger players coming through, when they hear this defensive midfield term, they can probably feel quite comfortable. They don't need to take as many risks. It's easy they to be a defensive they, midfielder. They don't take any risks. Yeah. They don't want the ball. I've seen it. I mean, I take the, I know he's, 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 he plays for Dyer, for example. Dyer does what... He's, and the managers obviously expect him mm. to do that. But as long as he could get on the ball, I said, no, I'm a defensive midfield player. I sit back. And the only time he comes into the game is when you lose the ball. But if you get forward at the right time, you don't lose the ball 
anyway. And look enough, but only Pellegrini is not into it quite the mid like he knows. Of course he's a good he's a good defender, Rice. But it doesn't stop you getting forward at the right time, Nathan. That's what he's doing. In other words, he's an all round player, a bit like Kante at Chelsea at his best when he was playing in the middle field. You know, he he nobody won the ball more than he did. Yeah. But he got forward, he didn't sit behind the defenders and let them let them get on with it. Like that's huge praise for some somebody who I think he turned twenty on Monday. Yeah. Yeah. When you're looking at players of that age and you've always said, you know, players should automatically get better, particularly midfield players, their yes. awareness everything should yes. improve yeah. as they get older. When you yeah. look at a player at nineteen twenty playing at that level, yeah. what are you looking out for? What are the pointers that suggest he's going to go on and, and achieve the greatness well, that well, people want? Well first of all he looks to? for the ball. He takes responsibility for it. And then when he does get the ball he's well able to use it. And he scored a goal last week, and I think he will score more goals. When he doesn't have the ball, he wins a lot of tackles and, and disrupts the, the opposition. What more do you want? Do you know what I mean? Mm. I'd pay 50 million for him now because I'm thinking four or five years' time, he's going to be worth double that. He's just a top class player. And that if we can get him, it would be absolutely fantastic. Uh, and hope, make, hope, hope we do get him. And we've got Redmond mentioned in, in it. And I think what Mick is doing very well, he, he seems to be getting around players that we didn't go for before. Like he seems to know Redmond. I, didn't, I never heard of Redmond being any way associated with us. Yeah, yeah, his mother we was saw him coming Dublin. on last night. Did you see him in the match? Yeah, he scored a great goal. Very good. What, what, wouldn't he be great for us? Yeah. We had Redmond and... and, and, and uh, well, it, change, it, it changes the entire outlook for probably the next five, ten years if Declan Rice declares for Ireland. Oh, definitely. No, I'd go for him. I, mean, I think he's, if you say he's worth 50 million now, I think in two or three years' time, you can only get better and be worth more. I, I think he's, he's, I think he's, he's a terrific prospect. Well, he's more than a prospect now. I think he's a real player. He's very young. He's mobile. He's big. He can tackle. He can score a goal. He can he do all the things that midfield players want to do. So you don't have him... If somebody said, what sort of a midfield player is he? I'd say he's a midfield player. You know? <laughs> he's not a designated... Uh, you can do it holding all. midfield because the, the thing about the holding midfield I know we keep going on about it Nathan and, and I hear all the pros and all saying it he allows the other midfield players to go forward now that's the biggest load of nonsense going where's the ball mm. right the midfield player gets forward in relation to where the ball is at the right time they're not they're not free to go forward in other words say that the midfield player the whole midfield player has it and the two the two players are allowed to go forward and they start running forward and it's not the right thing to do yeah. You have to do the right thing. You know, so the, the, the designated holding, the three midfield players are midfield players. And they should be defending at the right time and attacking at the right time when there's, when there's, a proper, when there's an opportunity to do so. Yeah, a lot of praise for Declan Rice. Uh, there's no doubt about that. Just before we wrap up, uh, you're very good at um, bursting these urban myths from time to time. Last night we were talking about Bielsa and uh, the Spygate and things that go on in football. And somebody texted in saying that Don Revy, you send flowers to the wives of referees before matches. Now that's exaggerated. That, that exaggerated or untrue? I never, I never heard of that. I mean, Don Revy was was was, was accused of loads of things. <laughs> <laughs> but Don 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 Revy was a Yorkshireman. I don't think he'd be sending flowers to anybody, not even his wife. No, I never heard that, uh, Nathan. I mean, you do hear a lot of things that Don Revy was supposed to have done, but that wasn't one of them. Uh, but uh, you know, Don Don's attention to detail at the time was uh, uh, beyond the other managers. Now, I played for Don. I always felt that was exaggerated. Right. To be honest. Not that he did it, but he did do it, but I thought his emphasis on the, on the opposition was exaggerated, you know? And I was a great admirer of Don's, but when you're a player, you, well, I, in my opinion, you let the manager get on with it. But I remember playing in a match against, I think it was Sheffield United, right? And uh, Don used to have a meeting on a Friday, and Sheffield United did this, and Sheffield United did that, Sheffield United did that. And I remember, see, I came to Manchester United, and I was walking out with Norman Hunter, I said, Norman, is that the same Sheffield team we hammered 6 0 five weeks ago? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, uh, again, just to go back to Don, see, when I went to Leeds first, it was a very, very young team. Norman Hunter, Paul Greeny, and all the attention to detail was, was brilliant and essential. But when we got, that was in 63. When we got to 68, 69, Norman Hunter and these lads were six or seven years older and really mature players. And I think Don, being so close, didn't see it. Right. He didn't see us mature. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, he was still worrying about the opposition rather yeah. than just trusting it. Yeah, and, and, and there was a great example of that. Now, and I'm a great admirer of Don's. He was one of the great managers. At Christmas time of 1971, uh, we, we went in the chase for the league. We were fourth or fifth. Mm. And I remember Don having a meeting. He said, right, forget about the league. Forget about it. 
we're going for the cup as soon as the cup starts in January. We had the best spell that we ever. That was the time in Southampton we beat 7 0. Yeah. And beat Manchester United 5 1 the week before. The, 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 you won we, the cup. We won the cup. And we, beat, won the we, were beaten, we were beaten by Wolves. Yeah. We needed a point to win. But what I'm saying is, Don said, right, forget about it. Just go out and play. Which we did. You know what I mean? Pressure off. And there was no. Because, but, but to be fair to Don, he was, he, he, it, what he did with the young lads in the first place was absolutely brilliant. But there was a stage. Like, in, like with Matt Busby, right, out you go and play. Don said, right, forget about the league, we're going for it, that's it, go out and play. Absolutely brilliant. brilliant. John, great stuff as always. We'll talk to you next Thursday. Thanks, Nathan. All right, that'll all be up on offtheball.com.